Okay, so as Jen mentioned, I'm going to be talking about web, web scraping for codophobes. And uh, if you've ever gone online and found like a really cool list, like if you're a link builder and you find like a cool list of blogs that you want to reach out to or a cool table and you've copied and pasted from the web to Word or Excel or Google Doc, this is for you. First, let me just say, I am not a developer. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a propeller head. I'm an analyst. I'm an SEO. I'm a data wrangler. Okay, so if I can do this, anybody can do it, really. I mean, and so what I did was, because it took me so long to really kind of wrap my mind around it, I read Distilled's guide on web scraping. I read Richard Baxter's article on it, and I was like, oh, it sounds so good, but I just, if I don't understand the why behind something, then it just remains really intimidating to me. So I'm going to break this down into like baby talk, but it'll make sense by the end. First of all, I just want to give a shout out to two of my colleagues, Chris Lee and Ethan uh, Lyon. They are web scraping gurus. Um, so you should follow them on Twitter and ask them all of your questions because they're smarter than I am. Okay, so I'm going to focus particularly on web scraping in Google Docs. There are other ways you can scrape the web, like the SEO tool plugins for Excel is a really good one, but I'm just going to focus on Google Docs. Three primary ways that you can scrape using Google Docs are using three different functions, import feed, import HTML, and import XML. So I'm going to start with import feed because it's the easiest, all right? So all you need is the URL of the feed. That's it. Everything in italics, those are all optional. So don't worry about them. I don't even know what they mean. So there are two ways you, you can structure your, your import feed function. You can either embed the URL into the function. Uh, and if you do that, you have to wrap it in double quotes. Or you can put the URL in a separate cell and reference it that way. And you'll see that I do that all through the presentation because one, uh, yeah, I'm kind of OCD and it's just so much neater, but it's also easier to troubleshoot. Like if you run into any problems, you can just check those cells and see what the problem is. And here's what it looks like. You see import feed and then it's just referencing before. Okay. <laughs> I kind of switch out the picture here. Um, so as Will mentioned, he did this presentation on stalking for links. And he rocks so many different ways that you can uh, import feeds. I mean, there, I mean, Topsy, Twitter, everything that he mentioned. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's, it's awesome. OK, next up, we have import HTML. There are two options for import HTML. You can import tables and lists. Lists are just unordered lists, like bullet points or a numbered list. And the, uh, the structure for that, oops, this stopped working, uh, is also pretty straightforward. You have three arguments. The URL, same as before, you can embed it, wrap it in quotation marks, or put it in a separate cell. Then you have query, which is just going to be table or list. And once again, you can embed it into the function, wrap it in quotation marks, or just put table or list in a separate cell. And then there's an optional one, index, and that's if, like, let's say you're, you want to scrape a particular table, but there are multiple tables on the page, then you just kind of have to figure out which one. And it's not always really intuitive because sometimes the HTML is structured with a table. So if you don't get what you want and you have the index in a separate cell, then what I do is I just keep switching it until I get what I want. Okay, and here's what that looks like. Look how neat it is. I just have B4, the URL in B4, the query in B5, and the um, index in B6. Okay, same for a list, yada, yada. Okay, I'm just going to use the thing. Okay, next up we have import XML. This one gets a little tricky. It doesn't look tricky. You just have URL and a query. But the query uses something called XPath. And you might ask yourself, what's XPath? Well, I went to the W3 website, and this was what it has to say about XPath. XPath uses path expressions to select nodes or node sets in an XML document. What does that mean? I have no idea. And because I'm not a developer, I suffer 
from a deplorable lack of curiosity. I mean, I really just don't care. Don't even bother explaining to me, because I won't understand it. But I can tell you this, there are seven different types of nodes, and the two that you're going to use the most for scraping are elements and attributes. I do have one example in a Google Doc that I'll share. This is an absolutely massive Google Doc where I break down in different tabs the different types of import commands and have lots of examples. I have notes, and it's just crazy. And I'll share it on Twitter when I finish here, as well as the slide share. So I'm going to blow through this, but you can play all day. OK, so what's an element? If you're familiar at all with HTML, it's just basically whatever lives inside a bracket. Okay? And the way that XPath is organized is just like anything else. Directories on a website, uh, Windows Explorer. You have these parent-child nodes. And it just sounds intimidating because they call them nodes. But just ignore that. Okay? So you just drill down from the root, and you have, let's say, HTML, then you have a div, then you have an unordered list, blah, 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 until you get what you want. Okay, attributes are, they reside inside the elements. And the way that I figured out how to identify them is if you have an element and there's an equal sign inside, that's an attribute. Most commonly, you're going to see attributes called class or ID, but you could have uh, size, you can have all kinds of attributes. And what an attribute does, let me just break this down in plain English, okay? So let's say you want to talk about me to someone next to you. And you, you're in a group of people and, you know, there are equal numbers of chicks and dudes, okay? So you don't, if you wanted all of the chicks, you, know, you would just say, okay, forward slash chicks. And that would give you a list of all of the chicks. If you just want to talk about me, hopefully you'll say nice things, but you you need attributes to explain which chick exactly do you want to talk about. So let's say you say, okay, uh, the ginger. Well, if there are seven gingers in the room, then you have to get a little more specific. So you might say, the ginger with short hair. Well, if there's another ginger chick in the room with short hair, you have to go back to the drawing board again and say, okay, the ginger with short hair with the funky shoes. Then everyone's going to say, oh, okay, that must be Annie. And that's exactly what you're doing with XPath. With these attributes, you're saying, OK, I want this element. But if there are multiple of the same elements, the attributes tells you which one specifically. OK? All right, so there are some key characters. The forward slash, this just tells you to start scraping at the root. You can use a double forward slash, which lets you start scraping wherever you want. The at sign tells you that you're selecting an attribute. Get it? At attribute. That helps me a lot. OK. Square brackets, that just answers the question, which one? So all of those things that qualify which, at which element, like so you have chicks and then uh, ginger, short hair, weird shoes, those, are, those would all go inside the brackets. And then the, uh, the asterisks, that's just a wild card. All right. So, here we have a basic page. And let's say that you want to scrape all of the anchors on the page. Easy sneezy. You just double forward slash A. That's going to scrape all of the anchors. But it's very rare that you want all of the anchors on the page. But it is kind of magical because they all just appear below. But let's say you want to scrape the URLs. Well, then the, the href is the attribute inside the, um, inside the anchor. So you'll do forward slash A and then drill down at href. And why do you need the at sign? Because it's an attribute. Because if you look at a link, you have the element, the anchor element, and then look, an equal sign. That must be an attribute. OK, so now we're going to look at a real example. And I stole this from uh, Distilled's Import XML Guide for Google Docs. And I have a link, but you can also get it from my slide share. So let's say you have a, a list of links like this, and you want to scrape them. The first thing you're going to do if you're in Chrome is you're going to right click and choose Inspect Element. If you're a Firefox person, bleh, uh, you can use Firebug. Okay, It'll do the same thing. But I'm going to show Chrome. So when you do that, what happens is you get a little window underneath your page, at the bottom of your page, and it shows you what you clicked on, the specific HTML, and it kind of shows you the ecosystem around it. 
So, and you can see the parent-child relationships because each child is indented from the parent before. So you have great-grandparents, grandparents, parents, you get the idea. But if you just have like a couple of children, or they're called child nodes, it's pretty easy to tell. But sometimes you will have a bunch of child nodes and then it's not so easy to tell the, the hierarchy. So, so I just discovered a couple weeks ago, which is kind of embarrassing, but if you look at the bottom, I have it highlighted in yellow, that gives you the exact hierarchy. So that's very helpful when you actually start scraping and you'll see how it all ties together. Okay, so for that list, what you could do is you could start at the, at the root, HTML, and drill all the way down. But you're gonna look like a dork because no one does that in the real world. The way the cool kids scrape is they start at what they absolutely need, they use the double forward slash, and they grab what they need. But one thing I should clarify is that, you know, like it's just kind of like if people, if someone is describing me, you know, I just gave you one example of how they just could describe me, but each person might use different qualifiers. It's the same with XPath. And in the Google Doc, I show five different XPaths that will scrape the same exact list, except I scrape the URLs because I think that's a little more relevant. So it's just, but there are just different degrees of efficiency. So, and that's one thing I don't like about the scrape similar extension for Chrome, because it kind of gives you the impression that there's only one way to scrape, and there's not. Okay, so the way I finally thought of the double forward slash is that it just meant like, okay, there's a bunch of crap before the node that I really want, so I'm gonna put the forward slash. But then the really tricky thing is, you can even have it in the middle. So you could say, I need this div with a class equal main, and then there are a bunch of other nodes that I don't care about, and then I want the second block quote. And again, you'll see examples in the, in the Google Doc. And then I'm just gonna fly through a few more qualifiers that you can use as you get more advanced. So you can use starts with, in this example, I scrape just the links from secure sites by saying it has to start with HTTPS. Or you could say contains, like I scrape just the links that had iPad in it by using contains. And again, all of these are in the, the massive Google Doc. Here's what that looks like. Oh, and I even got extra tricky and scraped that list and said, okay, go to that link, just get me the email so I can email the person about their, um, about their iPad. And it's like some kind of inbred scraping thing, but it's cool. Um, so, or you can use the index value. And in this case, this just tells me, I just want the fourth anchor, okay? Um, or if you wanna get extra tricky, you could use last, you know? So this just says, and then I, I experimented and I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, I can get the second to the last H4 by saying last minus one. But now I'm just showing off. Okay, so, um, so what I did was I sent out an email to all my colleagues here at SEER and I was like, okay, so what are some of the creative ways that you use uh, import commands and, and scrape? And here's the list, you can check it out. I'm not gonna go through everything, but I do wanna give one more shout out because he contributed both to the list and to the massive Google Doc. Um, Nico Maselli, he's also awesome at scraping, so you should follow him, and he's just cool. Okay, so if you wanna check out the Google Doc, again, I'm gonna tweet it out um, as soon as I finish, but you can go to bit.ly forward slash Annie's GDoc, and, um, and here's what it looks like. And oh, just to make things a little easier, every time where there's a function, I highlighted it in yellow. And, um, and then there's a tab for import XML, HTML, and, and feeds. Um, and then my colleagues also contributed to that. So it's just, it's massive, it's insane. If you wanna play with it, you just log in, go to file, make a copy, and poke around and have fun.